Welcome to the Soul Craft Your Life podcast. My name is Carmen Marshall, and I'm a life design and manifestation expert, a seven figure entrepreneur, wellness educator, and a dance teacher. And I'm passionate about helping you create a magical and fulfilling life. Whether you want to discover your purpose, learn how to attract financial abundance, or create more health, balance, joy, and connection in your life, the Soul Craft Your Life podcast has got you covered. One part strategy and one part soul. Each week we explore both the practical and the spiritual with intriguing experts and fascinating human beings, all sharing their wisdom to help expand what we think is possible for our own lives. The goal, to help you create a life you love on your own terms that stems from your soul. Let's dive in and discover what this life has to offer each of us. Hi, gorgeous souls. Welcome to episode seven, which is all about using human design to create aligned businesses and relationships with expert Eden Carpenter. So during COVID, a really good friend of mine, Steve from episode one, recommended a free human design app. And I'll put it in the episode show notes at carmenmarshall.com forward slash seven. And it resonated hugely. So I started using human design for decisions in my business and in my relationships, and it helped me understand myself and others even more and what the most aligned soulful choice was for me and the life I wanted to create. Why I'm so excited to interview Eden is number one, I think human design is a powerful personal development tool that anyone can use. Think of the best personality test system times 10 and get quick, but also soulful insights and results. And number two, Eden explains human design incredibly well. She makes it so easy and accessible. So a little bit about Eden. She's a leading expert in human design for all things business, manifestation, and abundance, which we love. She first found human design when she was working on healing her own relationship to money. After experiencing how powerful the deconditioning process can be, and we'll explain what that is, she decided to study human design deeply and help others in the same way. She started her own human design coaching practice while completing a degree in nursing, but she left the field shortly after to run her rapidly growing business full-time. And in just three years, she built a multiple seven-figure company that supports herself, her husband, and over 20 team members. Her coaching certification program, digital courses, and transformational experiences have helped thousands of people align with their truth, trust their intuition, and share their gifts with the world. I can't wait to introduce Eden to you and explore human design with you, whether you're brand new to it or love it as much as I do. Let's dive in. Eden, I am so excited to have you here. I've been wanting to bring this conversation to my listeners for quite a while. So I've introduced you, but I would love to have you really explain what human design is. Absolutely. So human design, if you are completely unfamiliar with it, I think a good description of it would be kind of a bridge between psychology and astrology. So it is astrology based. The foundation of human design is astrology, but we've found a way to make the information a little bit differently organized. And with this new organization of information, there's no houses, there's no, no like really nitty gritty information that way. Um, it makes it more applicable to your daily life and it shows you, um, it kind of blends it with things like the chakra system. It blends the Kabbalah. So it's a bunch of different modalities that come together and essentially it just gives you this blueprint of your soul. And I like to think of it as almost like the magic that you came into this world with. So if you are, I think everyone has magic in them. And so if you are, let's say, um, you have this spell book. And so you come into this world and there are certain spells that you just know. There are certain things that naturally you're going to be good at. It's really just coded into your DNA when you had that, that moment that you were born, because that moment that you were born, when your soul comes into your body, it's your first impression of you. 
And so everything comes back to the feeling of what it feels like to be you. And it's coming back to that first moment that you felt like you. And so this is going to be the most authentic energy for you to be expressing. And so we have things that are defined and we have things that are undefined. And so essentially with this human design chart, you can see this map of the lessons you're here to learn, the the magical traits that you have that are just naturally easy for you. And so what the process looks like is figuring out, you know, what you're good at and then looking at where you're not allowing yourself to express those traits fully and where you're not allowing yourself to really be shining your magic, where you're holding back, but also where you may feel like you lack. Because just like we have all of these traits for what we're good at, we also have these these lenses and these ways that we perceive other people. So we see things in other people and we might feel this insecurity around like, well, they have this and everyone does it this way and I just have to figure this out. So human design gives you the pressure or gives you permission to stop trying to solve those answers for yourself. Stop trying to solve those problems for yourself. And it allows you to learn from other people without feeling insecure for not knowing already. So that's my long-winded answer, but that is what I think human design is. Mm, it's, It's so perfect. I really wanted to have you explain it because I know probably many of my listeners have done this too. We've done different personality tests, whether it's Myers-Briggs or DISC, or maybe we've gotten into astrology a little bit, but I found they were always limited in one way or another, like DISC only took you so far. Or for me, astrology was too in-depth. I loved Mm -hmm. it, but I was like, I can't really introduce this to my listeners because it'll take you down a rabbit hole. Versus human design, it's so accessible. And you can use it right away in your life and understand yourself in business, understand yourself in relationships. And why I really wanted to bring you on this show is I think out of anyone I've heard, you explain it in the most accessible, easy to understand way. So I'm really excited to have this conversation. Thank you. Yeah. That's always my goal is to make this applicable and understandable. Mm. So can you tell us how you got into this? So your, your story, your background, um, I think is fascinating. And I, I know our listeners are going to really love this too. Yeah, absolutely. I am a self-taught individual from pretty much from birth. I was homeschooled in a very religious household and there was a lot of, um, you know, this religious based curriculum. And so I didn't actually go to school until I was a senior in high school for the first time. And so I did one year in a public school before going into college. And so being a, being a a student as a, like a homeschooled student, you're responsible for a lot of your learning. And so in college, I realized that I was really bad at taking tests. I'd never really had to take a test in a standardized testing environment. I'd always had the freedom to be in my own home. And so I started realizing that I knew the information, but I was really bad at taking taking the tests and actually recalling it in the moment. So I started studying the brain and I started studying how do we learn? How do we remember? How do, you know, how do you figure these things out? And along that journey, I was also kind of trying to figure out who I was. And so in a psychology class, I love that you mentioned the Myers-Briggs personality types because I got very, very into those. And I felt like that made sense at such a deep level. And I could like type people after having a certain conversation with them and like asking the right questions. And it was just really exciting because I felt like this finally makes sense. Like I found something that makes me make sense to me. And so I actually was in school to become a nurse. It was kind of the, I want to help people, but I don't really know what direction to go in. I guess I'll be a nurse. They help a lot of people. I can always further my education. And so there was, I think it was actually in that same psychology class. I just remember I had seen human design pop up somewhere. I was starting to get into like manifestation and I'd been studying law of attraction for a while, very very self-led, but always, always had my nose in a book or an audio (laughs) podcast or something going. Um, And so I found human design and it just like popped up on Instagram one day because I was studying, I was following, you know, the Enneagrams and I was following Myers-Briggs personality types. So it was just in my algorithm and human design popped up and I pulled up this chart and I was like, this is going to be amazing. And I see shapes and colors and lines and numbers. I'm like, nope, uh, no, that's too complicated. And I closed the page and I like left it. And then it kept popping up all of the sudden, everybody that I was following was talking about it. And I was like, this is strange. Like, why is this everywhere? And I was like, yeah, but that's so complicated. Like it's a phase it'll pass. And then I was in, um, in that psychology class with a professor who 
almost never used PowerPoints. I think he used three in the entire class, but there was a PowerPoint up and there was something about like there's this this big block of text and there was a glitch. And so it was all, it was off and it was like everything looked wrong, but the words human and design were right next to each other. And like the text wasn't having a conversation about that. Like this was a psychology, it was like human behavior and like something some people are, yeah. I have no idea what it was actually talking about, but I just remember seeing human and design next to each other and saying, okay, now it's actually everywhere and I have to figure this out. So as the self-taught individual that I am, I pull up Google, I pull up my chart and I'm like, what's the manifesting generator and what is the center and what is the center? And I just started consuming all of this information and I got to a point where I was reading about the undefined G center and that's, I have two centers that are undefined and that one seems to be a big deal in my chart for me. And so I was reading about the undefined G center and how in its shadow expression, it's searching for a sense of identity. It's searching for like an understanding of self. It's searching for like lovability. And it's really trying to answer that question of who am I and where am I supposed to be going? And here I was in psychology classes and taking manifestation courses and reading all of these self-help books around like, find your soul purpose and what's your gifts and like everything that I was doing was motivated by this question of who am I and what am I supposed to be doing here and so when it gave me this permission to stop searching for that it just felt like this weight off of my chest and I remember like crying at my desk over this thing and I was like okay there's something here because the Myers-Briggs never made me cry (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I, I guess it made sense to me and made me feel kind of seen, but it never made me cry. It never hit me at this level. And so I started getting textbooks. You can see part of my collection here that I've been referencing lately that I haven't put back. Um, and I just went down the rabbit hole and I started studying my chart and it was, it was about two years of studying it for myself and just going through this embodiment journey while I was still in school before I decided to bring it to the internet. And then I said, okay, I really understand my design. I understand pretty much the basics. And since I'm a, what's the problem? How can I figure it out person? I wanted other people's charts. So at this point I was in nursing school And I put out on the internet, I'd been making a couple of posts here and there about like life and manifestation and just like goals, goal setting. I don't even know what I was talking about, but I was like, Hey, just like send me your birth information and I'll do a free human design reading. Cause then it was information that I could respond to and I could like figure out, I could go to the textbook, I could research it and I would understand it better than just like piecing together. Like this is a projector. I wanted to see a projector chart and like work with it. And so I'd never had anybody, I'd made like a fun calendar, I'd made some affirmations, some fun like PDFs and downloadable resources, but I'd never had like an actual response to anything. And so I put it out there and I had like 150 people reach out to me and I had like a thousand followers. Wow. Wow. (laughs) So there was this huge response for these free readings. And so I put it out there of like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do these 20 minute free readings. I did all of them. I've like made this organizational spreadsheet. And then I was like, if you want to dive deeper, like book a session with me, like we can talk about it a little bit deeper. And that's how I got my first couple of clients. I got my first couple of coaching clients and like the feedback from day one has been the way that you explain it makes sense. I've been trying to figure this out and it doesn't resonate with the way that you say it does. And so I started talking about it. That led to people asking for courses. I eventually created the Sacred Success Coaching Certification Program, which is the cornerstone of my business now. It's a, it's everything, a human design. It's my interpretations. It's my explanations of absolutely everything through the lens of coaching and self-coaching. So we go through every gate, every planet, there's like 300 something videos in there, but that's, mm-hmm. that's where it kind of landed is all of this human design content. And now I teach it for business because I scaled my business very quickly. And that led to people asking like, Hey, how'd you grow your business? And so mm-hmm. that's what I do now is I help people grow their businesses and align with their designs at really high and fun levels. Mm. And you said so many juicy things. I, I think it's so important what you said that human design made you cry. Because I Mm -hmm. think our purpose is always connected to the things that we're intrigued about, that we're passionate about, and that make us cry. Like that is such the 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 little thread that's saying follow that. That's like where Mm -hmm. your soul is meant to go. And then also, I think it's so fascinating too that 
well, A, you did, is it, did you do 150 free sessions? Yes. Too? <laughs> I think the official number was 160. So it was just like, I made a little slideshow. I recorded a 20, 15, 20 minute video, but I did 160 of them. <laughs> mm. Talk about learning your craft and really getting to understand yeah. human design charts for everyone, you know, not just yourself, mm. obviously, but yeah. yeah. I think the other interesting thing, and I think this is really important for our listeners as well, that if human design ever seemed complicated, you're not alone because I remember seeing it back in 2000 in Boulder. Someone mm -hmm. gifted me a session and I had a, a session with a, a wonderful man, but it was way too complicated and I just didn't even relook at it. And it wasn't till COVID hit, probably too early 2020, where it was popping up for me too. And I looked at it again. And it's the old thing, when, when you're ready, the teacher appears. And I think for many of us, it's, um, it's, it, maybe it's just it's time, or maybe there's people like you who can explain it really well, mm -hmm. but I think it's so worthwhile looking into. And I'd like to segue into how it can help you as an entrepreneur and then also in your relationships as well. Absolutely. So, um, Actually, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'll, I'll share my little yeah. story in a second. But. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so helpful in business. I recently got the the amazing honor, and it feels like an honor, and I definitely describe it as an honor. I got the honor of working with this idea for something called the Energetic Resume. And so we, I took all of this information. That's why I have a million textbooks over here. And I was able to synthesize it into this, this PDF that shows you what your traits are and what your gifts are specifically in like almost corporate language. And so we look at management skills. So if you have this chart that says, these are things that you're good at, we don't always have the experience that proves that we have that skill. And so it's something that I see as like an issue kind of in the job industry, the job industry, the corporate industry with jobs and hiring is that the jobs are so specific and they're looking for experience with specific things, but we're not looking at potential. And so with human design, when you're seeing what your actual potential is, you see what you're good at, you can turn that into a business very easily and it feels natural. It feels like a vocation. It feels, it flows so well. The other thing is human design does a lot with like nervous system regulation and, you know, deconditioning the stories that you have around yourself, but it also really focuses on decision-making. And so it tells you what signals inside of you are telling you this is a yes and telling you this is a no for that ultimate aligned highest purpose that you are connected to. And so if you're able to, like decision making is the core of entrepreneurship. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, it is difficult decision after difficult decision after complex, I don't really know what's happening situation. It's ongoing decision making. And so with this pressure of, you know, your company relies on the decisions that you make, the decisions that you make can predict the future and like the future relies on the decisions that you make in this moment. And so when you have this map that shows you one, what the most aligned way for you to make a decision is, but also helps you to differentiate the different voices inside of you. I now know and can pinpoint like exactly where I am in my emotional process because I've taken the time to learn about myself. And so if there's any kind of stressful situation with and entrepreneurship it can be very stressful. I know what my triggers are. I know the things that are going to make me possibly shy away from a really amazing opportunity. I know the things that are, you know, I know the voice of my insecurities and I also know what I'm good at and like what I'm, what I try and hide. And so if I know who I am and I know how I operate any situation, I can find peace and I can find calm and I can find this peace of mind and clarity regardless of what's going on. So it creates an incredible sense of peace internally. It helps with decision-making and it helps give you clarity around what you are good at so that you can just leverage that and work on that. So it's validation if you need it, even though you don't have experience to validate specific traits. So yeah, you can use it in so much. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And that's a, that, I hadn't actually heard of that where it can validate you in areas that you didn't even know you had the ability to do because you haven't had exposure to that yet. And yeah. of course, as entrepreneurs, we get thrown into stuff all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. What, um, so for many of our listeners, they may not know the five main, main um, styles or the, the five main categories. Could you share each of those five and what might each of those 
areas have a characteristic um, for entrepreneurship. So for example, I'm a manifestor generator. And it gave me such peace when I realized my personality type loves to continually create. So Mm -hmm. I'm married to a projector, so he's a lot more relaxed. So once we understood that, it made sense that I will always want to create. Like, I don't want to slow down. Like, it's not because I'm a workaholic. I just love to create. And that helped us not only in my business, really owning that, but also in our relationship as well. So could you give like a snippet? Yeah, let's go through the types. So in human design, one of the first things that you're going to come across is your human design type. And so the five types, like the whole point of human design is to figure out how unique you are. And so it's interesting that we always start with your aura type because it is kind of like a category and a label, even though the system is about figuring out who you are as a very unique individual. So I like to think of type as like, yes, it's your aura type, but it's it's more of the general flavor that you are. So if you think about flavors, there's a bunch of different flavors. We have sweet, we have salty, we have bitter, we have like that umami earthy flavor. There's all of these different flavors, but within each of those flavors, there's a million different kinds of sweet. There's a million different kinds of fruit. There's all of these different unique flavors within that category of sweetness. And so while each of the different aura types has like this general flavor, go, I really encourage you to go much further than just your aura type. If you want like one thing, look at your conscious sun, (laughs) it'd be like one gate or your profile because your aura type is going to show you like that it's the general summation of your, of your design. So we have five aura types. We have generators, which make up around 35% of the population. And essentially this means that generators have this, they have a defined sacral center and the defined sacral center means that they have consistent this like life force energy, this creativity that they want to put into things. So I see generators as people who every single day they wake up and they have physical energy that they want to put towards work. And this energy, it wants to come through you. And so you say creation, we are all creating in some way. And so this could be, you are, if you are in like HR, you take certain forms and you do things to them. You're putting energy into it. You're creating it and you're moving it into something else. And so that's what the generator does is it has this consistent energy inside of it that's coming through it and it wants to pour life force energy into something. And so it's important for any generator type to make sure that you're doing something that gives you excitement back. So whatever you're pouring life force into, if you're excited about it, you have more of that energy. So if we want to use kind of the analogy that I hinted at in the beginning of like your magic. So generators have this magic of And they they have this constant well of magic for effort, for putting effort into something for creation. And so they're going to be the people who build businesses. These are people who thrive. Um, Like I have lots of generators on my team. My copywriter is a generator and she loves creating. My graphic designer is a copywriter, is a generator. She loves that creativity, that pouring her energy into something. And so you know that you're in alignment as a generator when you're satisfied. And so the biggest thing for any generator type would be make sure that you are satisfied with the work that you're doing. So if you're an entrepreneur, this will tie into decision-making. If you don't know what's working and what's not working, look at where you're frustrated. Entrepreneurship has freedom of options. You can do absolutely anything with your business. If it's making you frustrated on a consistent basis, why not swap it out for something that would not be as frustrating? And so that is just like the basics of being a generator is you want to make sure that your business is fulfilling and it's satisfying for you. Because if it's satisfying, you're going to have that energy of you want to show up. Like I love my work. My husband has to force feed me sometimes and like make sure that I am taking care of myself. He says, you're a terrible human sometimes because you love your work so much. (laughs) And so, yeah, it's like we need to make sure that we're pouring our energy into something that is also giving us that satisfaction back. So we have generators, we have manifestors and manifestors, well, they don't have consistent access to that life force energy. They have these cycles and they have these creative urges. So the manifestors are here to work on a cycle. And so they work on pretty much a seasonal cycle. So they'll go through these phases of like an inner winter, kind of a reflection period. They'll get some energy back and then they work in these creative bursts. So building a business as a manifestor means that you have to take into consideration your energy cycles. So that 
means if you know that you're going to have a couple of months where you do not want to show up for business, you're going to have to create a, st a structure where there's passive income coming in for those months where you're not having those creative urges or that your creative urges are, you know, you're creating offers that people put people in payment plans something where you're taking into consideration that you're going to want to do a lot of work. You're going to be focused. You're going to have a season of focus, and then you're going to have a season of rest and manifestors are here to get things started. So manifestors in business, you may find yourself starting a project, starting an idea, starting a company. And then once it's up and running, feeling that energy of like, I want to pull back from this. And so you want to make sure that you have the support systems in place. So a team, if necessary, partners, if necessary, to make sure that whatever is running for you or your business can run for you when it's time for you to step away. And so manifestors, it's very important for them to learn to step away from projects. So then you and I are both manifesting generators, which means we have that generator aura, that flavor of... I'm going to just take things in. I'm going to turn it into something else. I'm going to generate all this energy. I'm going to build something. But we also have cycles. So what that means is while pure generators tend to have this like consistent, they find the thing that they love and they're able to do it forever, we're going to go through phases. And so I'm in a phase where yeah, I used to absolutely love the graphic design aspect and that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be creating in Canva. I wanted to spend all of my time there. And now I want to write. And I just want to write and I just want to be in Google Drive and I just want to be writing my content. So I go through phases. Like I have podcast, I have a podcast, and it's not an every single week podcast. That's the intention, but it's a phase podcast. And so it has to work on my creative cycles because while I'm always excited to show up for my business in some capacity, the tasks that I'm doing inside of my business, sometimes they're going to give me energy and joy, and sometimes they're not. So we're going to have these creative urges and this energy that we need to burn every day. Then we have projectors and projectors are a, they make around 20, around 25, no, not 25, around 20% of the population. And projectors are here to guide things. Projectors are not necessarily here to, like you mentioned, your husband's a projector. He doesn't want to be working all the time. He's the person who's supposed to be standing in the middle and making sure that everything is working smoothly. Because if somebody is watching the work happen, and if someone is facilitating the work, someone has to be working on the workers. Someone has to be focused on the system. Somebody has to be focused on making sure that the idea and the project is being made in a way that is like maximizing everyone's efficiency. And so projectors will find this, this system or this niche or a, something that they are really skilled in. And if you're curious as a projector where to look or any type, I suggest looking at your channels um, because those are, it literally shows you like what energy you're transmuting into what kind of energy. So it shows you where, what, where you're starting and where you go. And so I love, I love looking at the channels for that. So projectors, because they have these, they essentially their energy centers, they go from here to here and they move things when activated by motorization from other people. And so they're going to get these, they they kind of dive really deep into people and they see them very, very intently. And so they don't want to be, you know, focused in and just working and just get lost in the work. They want to get lost in the people and they want to work on the people and they want to make sure that the people People are working in harmony together. And so that's where the projector is going to come in and they're going to have this like bird's eye view and they're going to be able to see, oh, there's some weird communication things happening here. What if we just like make this bridge? Like what if we do this thing? And so if you're a projector in business, there's first of all, there's tons of projectors who are very successful, who have built their own companies. Like I said, the types is a very, very general starting point. You want to dive into more of the specific gifts that you have and not feel like, please don't feel disempowered by anything that is, that is just mm -hmm. type information. Um, but like Chris Jenner is a projector and she does such an amazing job of like, she's not the one, she's not always the one she's not creating her own makeup line. She's not doing all of the photo shoots herself, but she's managing the family and she's managing the message. And with her design, that makes a lot of sense. She has channels that specifically showcase that she is good at managing a family and making sure that her family is seen and publicized and monetized. Like that's written into her human design chart. And she's very aligned with that. And so she's built a company by literally building companies within her family, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like she had each of her kids have these businesses and these, you know, empires and she's managed all of that. And she's been able to make that happen without doing it herself. 
And so that's like that's the key that I want projectors to take away is you get to have this this business and you get to have this growth happen, but you don't have to do it yourself. And so that's that's projectors. And then we have reflectors. Time for a quick commercial break. My seven day free email course, 100K in 10 minutes a day for network marketers is about to open again. Yes, it only takes 10 minutes per day for your business and lifestyle to grow easily using the soul craft method that I've been teaching for 20 years. You can accomplish more in the next four months, historically the best time to build your network marketing business than any other time of the year by making your income recession proof and by offering a pathway for others to do the same thing. I only open this free mini course every one to two years so you don't wanna miss this intake. And it will give you in-depth insight to my full eight week immersion course opening end of September. So secure your spot now on the waiting list at carmenmarshall.com forward slash 100K. The link is in the show notes as well. And then watch your inbox for your welcome email right away. And then the free seven day email course starts September 13th. Now let's get back to the podcast. And so reflectors will have no definition in their chart, which means every single one of their energetic traits isn't like on every single day. And so it means that throughout a month, they're going to experience all of their different energies and all of the different um, channels they have connections in, but they get to be this very clear present reflection of what's happening right now. And so if you put like essentially a mirror in front of, in any situation, you see what's happening. And so if you have a, like a fight or something, all of a sudden, if you see yourself when you're in a fight, you're like, whoa, that's how that looks. And you can get really surprised by the reflection that you see back. And so reflectors can be very, very energetic people because they're reflecting that excitement and that energy of the people around them. So what's important for a reflector is your community because you sample the energy from different people. So essentially your magic is being able to see what everyone else's magic is and see what they're expressing right now and watching how they do it. And then you can emulate it yourself. So you can essentially mirror manifesting generators and you can mirror projectors and you can mirror all of these different people. And so reflectors do really well. Like I'm working with a mentor. My mentor right now is a reflector and she just holds such incredible space. Like I can just talk to her and it feels like I'm talking to like my higher self because Mm. she's such an honest reflection of me. And so reflectors do well with quality control. They can come in and they can be the people who say, okay, yeah, this is your mission. This is what is actually happening. They make great like judges and like a central person in a community. Um, Teal Swan is a reflector. And so we, we don't have to get into her documentary, but she's a reflector. And so that community is such an important aspect for her. And she's actually like, she mirrors a lot of the health of the people around her. So of course she feels a lot of suffering, one from her experience, but two, because she's constantly in an environment where that's present and where that's Mm. happening. And so she mirrors that back. So if you're a reflector, one, start just watching the people around you and mirror them, mirror the people around you. And of course do this where you're mirroring them when it feels appropriate. And maybe if like, if you see somebody who the way that they are showing up on their Instagram lives, you just love, you just love that they do Instagram lives, just borrow that excitement, just borrow that energy that she is portraying in that Instagram live. And then once that's done, you can kind of empty out and you can release that energy, but you're here to sample things and you're here to be a reflection of the community. Um, Another great reflector is the skinny confidential Lauren Everett's. She's a reflector and she does a great job of, she has a podcast where she has very honest conversations of pretty much everything that's happening in the wellness industry. And she has this blog. So it's a very honest, like, these are my judgments. These are what I'm seeing. Very, um, very objective perspective. Like this is my judgment of this product. This is how it actually turns out. And she's been able to create an essentially an entire company around her opinions and the conversations that she wants to have. And so that's a great example of a reflector in alignment. And I think that's, I think we did all of them. (laughs) I think so too. Can you give a good, I love how you gave examples of people. Can you give an example of a generator Um, I think we gave one of a projector and a reflector, but what would be a good example of a generator? 
Yeah, a good generator to look at would be um, Oprah is a generator. She's a generator with an open throat center. Um, I know a lot in like the in like my specific community. Um, Chakra Girl, she's a generator. Let's see. Amanda Francis is a generator. Yeah, lots of generators. And then manifesting generators. Tony Robbins is a manifesting generator. Um, a few of the Kardashians are also manifesting generators. Like Kim Kardashian, she's a manifesting generator. So it's interesting to see her like go to law school and then, you know, starting all of these different companies when she's excited about them and when the passion is there and then like stepping away once she's no longer interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those are a couple of the ones that I'm, I'm knowing off the top of my head. And then manifestors, um, Johnny Depp is a manifester and so is Jennifer Aniston. She's an amazing manifester in the industry. I know Holly Marie is an incredible manifester to follow. Mm. Who else? That's what I'm remembering off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, that's, that's great. Cause it's so, we, we recognize, you know, Oprah's energy. So it's so, it's mm-hmm. such a good realization. Okay. That is a, a manifester or well, she's a generator, but yeah. yeah, that's perfect. What, so in terms of an entrepreneur decision-making, um, really settling into who you are, um, and really mm-hmm. owning that, what would you say human design also helps with something that recently for me has been in, in my hiring. And you mentioned this as well, like wow. your copywriter and your graphic artist is a, uh, our generators. And that's something that I started, um, just recently in the last two months of mm-hmm. well, actually six months of what are you, because I need a generator. <laughs> yeah. so what else would you say this can really help entrepreneurs with before we segue into relationships? Yeah. So it's been so helpful for me building a team and I've been really exploring, um, like I've built my team within the last year. And so it's all like very fresh in me. I'm like I said earlier, I will dive into the books and I'll educate myself and I'll try and figure it out. And when I was trying to lead the way that I was being told to lead, which is you have the plan, you create the vision, you create consistency, Um, and you have to create clear jobs and expectations, like clear deadlines, clear, like everything has to be clear. And for me, I don't have that clarity. Like naturally, I just don't always have that clarity. And so my team is very flexible and we, like we had a launch that we thought about starting on the first, it's probably going to happen tomorrow. We thought about today, we're able to push it back and be flexible because we're not putting those harsh deadlines on ourselves. We would rather we get it done right. And that means like, if I'm tired, I'm not working. If my generator people, if my generator team is tired, they don't have the energy to pour into this. And so I would rather us take the time to really pour our energy into it and make it what it wants to be before releasing it into the world. But also a lot of the girls on my team don't necessarily have experience or previous experience with the roles that they have right now. Like my graphic artist, she started with Pinterest. She was managing Pinterest, but she was making a lot of graphics with that. And so I looked at her design in her human design, she has like this open G center and like these specific gates. Like she's a very creative person. She's very good at seeing people and seeing like the elements that they want to pull out. And so I was like, I want you to like, let's figure out graphic design. Like if you want a course, I'll get you a course on it. If you want to, um, just like play with things, if you want help with it, like, what do you want? And so I let her explore that role and all of the girls on my team, they get this opportunity to, like, we talk about roles and responsibilities. We talk about, are you happy with what you want to be with what you're doing? Is there anything more that you want to be growing into? Because just because she didn't have experience with it previously doesn't mean that she doesn't have the potential and the potential was right there. And so being able to understand my team, one, it helps us communicate so well. We know what people need. And so like certain girls, they need like very specific things to respond to and other people do well. If I can just brain dump everything, then they can pick up like all of the different pieces that they need. They know that I need to get on a call and just talk something out instead of just boxer back and forth on something important. And so it's helped us to create an environment where everyone on the team feels safe to honestly express how they feel. We make decisions collaboratively and collectively, and they've had the opportunity to grow into positions and grow into skills that they naturally had. They just didn't have a previous experience to nurture. And so this is going to create 
Um, it creates a very healthy work environment. It creates content that is very high quality because the energy behind it is really aligned and it creates this safe space for them to, for them to grow into who they want to be. And even if that Mm -hmm. eventually becomes somebody beyond just working with me or, you know, someone beyond this team, we can have that conversation. I know that that would be a beautiful conversation at that time. So Mm -hmm. hiring, um, figuring out like what skill sets people have, communication, knowing how to communicate with somebody, and then also knowing like where people are fixed. I mean, I have a defined Ajna, which means I see things a very specific way and I have to take time to mentally process it. And so sometimes they will ask me questions like, I just don't know. Uh, Give me a couple of days. I have to chew on this. And they know that that's fine. They know that I'm not urging them to do anything. There's no pressure on me for needing momentary clarity. Um, And there's no pressure on them. Like they know they know that they can come to me with anything and we, we run mastermind calls together. But yeah, I would say that human design really helps you to invest in your team in a way that's actually going to make their lives easier, make their energy better, make them more confident in the skills that they're really good at. And then it also creates people who are like really happy with and satisfied with the work that they do, which creates high quality work. Mm. Lots of things. Yeah. And it ends up being so fulfilling because we all end up, and this is why I love human design as well, because it's really looking at that soul level. And when we look at the people who work for us, like what really does their soul want and what is important to them? And when you look at it from that standpoint, their growth, whether or not they stay with your company or go on, it doesn't matter because if we really care about people, we want the best growth for them as well. Mm -hmm. So it just, it changes how we do everything. Everything. Absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. So there's two things I still really want to talk about relationships, but also deconditioning. So this is something that is in all of your work that you talk about. Can you explain that? And then we'll, we'll segue into relationships, but what is deconditioning and how did you apply it to yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes. So deconditioning is the process of unlearning everything that you thought you needed to be and really just stepping into who you are and who you've always, always meant, you've always meant to be. And I feel like the journey to figuring out who we are, since obviously that's something that I've been on (laughs) for quite some time, the journey, it's never actually about like finding who you are. It's about coming back to who you are. And so it's never about like creating more. And so deconditioning, it breaks down all of the different themes in life. And so, you know, the ego center deals with self-worth. And so looking at the ego center, looking at the gates that are defined there, it tells you this story of how you experienced or the potential for how you experienced self-worth. And so me, I'm able to piece together like the center is defined for me and every single person in my family had it undefined. And so I learned that that was something that I, you know, the ego center has this innate sense of self-worth. And so I wanted things. I was vocal about my desires and, you know, I wanted big things. I was competitive and that was shut down for me. And so for a long time, I felt like, that was something that I needed to hide. Like I'm, I'm selfish. I want big things. I think too highly of myself. I must be a narcissist. So all of this gaslighting that I was doing to myself was pulling me away from being who I am and who I am is somebody who is naturally has a sense of self-worth and can see how certain things are valued and can see, um, you know, the value that I want to give to people and I can feel competitive and I can put my willpower towards things that I want. I'm a desire driven person. And so it gave me the permission slip and the deconditioning was coming up against those stories. You know, the story that says, I can't charge that much. Well, why do I feel like I can't charge that much? Well, because I, you know, what, what I feel like I'm asking for too much. And so I can look at my story related to self-worth and I can look at my chart and say, the healthiest expression of me and the most authentic thing to me is to charge what I desire to charge. And so if this is the price point where I feel satisfied, then that's the price point that's correct for this. And I don't have to worry about being too much for other people or will other people see the value in it. I can get to a space where I trust that I see the value in this because I see the value in this and other people get to see the value in this because they will calibrate to my level of confidence because I'm defined there. So I define the value 
for the people around me. And so as soon as I, because I mean, when I had low self-worth, I am defining my value as low. And so the people around me are also going to treat me like I have low value because they're mirroring my expression of it. And so it shows you, and that's a great segue into relationships because it shows you how you interact with people. And so if you know how you interact with people, you can know the impact that you can have and you can have an intentional and positive impact on people. And so deconditioning is, yeah, it's letting yourself be impactful and it's letting yourself be intuitive in the way that you naturally are. And that means that you have to let go of the stories that told you that you were too loud or you were too much or you were not enough of something. Mm. And practically, how did you decondition or work with your subconscious or shift negative beliefs? What was the process that you used that you found was helpful? Obviously, it was probably over a period of time and it's not just like yeah. I did one thing, but <laughs> just yeah, so people it's- understand what that, what that could look like for them. Absolutely. I use my chart almost like a tarot deck at this point where if I'm feeling something, I'll just look at it. And I'll just see where does my attention go? And my attention will usually grab onto something. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, gate 40. So everything in human design, it shows you the the kind of lower end expression and it shows you the higher end expression. And so if you're feeling uncomfortable and you're feeling like you're feeling weird, you want to change your your feelings and your sensations since that's the motivation to do anything. That's why you're deconditioning is to feel better. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're able to, like human design is a tool for self-awareness, you can look at the chart. And if you're first starting out, just learning about each of the different centers will bring up everything. So you'll learn about the themes. Like that's what did it for me was learning about that G center. So learning about the themes of, if you have an open head center, there's this pressure sometimes to search for answers. And there's this feeling of like, I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I have to find the answers. So it can cause mental anxiety. And so it'll show you some of these patterns and it's kind of like signs and symptoms. You say, whoa, I feel those signs and symptoms sometimes. I recognize that. So it's going to show you these things that you can recognize. And then once you recognize the patterns, you're kind of aware of it in yourself, you'll start to recognize it in real life. So all of a sudden you're starting to feel really frustrated because you were reading about it or because you were learning about your chart or because that was now in your awareness. You're remembering, oh, frustration is my sign that I'm pushing for something that isn't actually worth pushing for. And you can take a step back. And so instead of pushing further, which might've been your behavior pattern previously, you can stop that behavior pattern. You can say, okay, I know from my chart that frustration is a bad thing. And you can kind of work, you can talk yourself through the situation. So I'm a very mental chatter person. I've talked myself through a lot of it. Um, But then like things with working with my defined emotional center, it's been like movement and just tapping into my body and really just feeling into my body and like labeling sensations. I didn't realize how much Mm. I had stifled my communication around my emotions. And so, you know, I'd bottled everything up to where I didn't even know what I was feeling at times. And so that was, you know, going into my feelings and giving myself permission to, if I'm crying in my car because the song is sad, I'm crying in my car because the song is sad and I don't have to stop crying. I can let myself feel that. And so it's, yeah, it's been a lot of thought work. It's been some behavior work. And of course, identity work of just telling yourself that different story and seeing your self in a different perspective. Mm. Yeah, it's it's so interesting that human design actually ends up being your own type of therapy as well. Like you yeah. can isolate and identify and then shift. And it's wonderful because you can do it yourself and you can hire a coach and you can do work with a human design expert. But so much of it always returns you to your body and your sensations and really knowing yourself, which really is what we're here to do, you know, know mm-hmm. ourself and fulfill our purpose. So exactly. Mm -hmm. powerful stuff. So shifting on to relationships, how do you feel that human design really helps relationships? It is life-changing for relationships because as soon as, as soon as two people come together, your charts essentially plop on top of each other. And so you feel everything from that person. And this human design chart will show you not just like the sensations and the physical things that you're feeling, but also it it maps out behavior patterns. And so when you can see how you feel from certain people, like I have an undefined head center, my husband has a defined head center. And so whenever I'm around him, if he's asking questions, 
I will very often feel overwhelmed with the questions. And I will often be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm an emotional authority. He is a sacral authority. And so for me, decision-making takes me time. I have to feel it through. I have to talk about it. So in the beginning of our relationship, when we were buying stuff for our first house, I remember trying to find silverware and I was taking my time. I was feeling it through. And he was like, just pick one, just pick one, just pick one. And I remember getting this like physical sensation of I know it didn't matter. I know I was moving between two sets, but I could not make myself pick one. And so he has learned that I need more time to feel things through. He is incredibly sensitive to my emotions now. I mean, I had a big emotional, like a big healing session with my coach on Friday and then a big conversation, like some family things. And it was just a really, really big emotional day. And I just told him, I was able to inform him like, Hey, I'm having big feelings. Um, I'm just going to need to be on the couch. I'm probably going to need you to leave me alone for the rest of the night so that I can just be in my feelings. And so he went to the store and got me flowers. He got me chocolate. He made dinner. He set me up on the couch. He set me up with everything that I could possibly need. And then he went upstairs to play video games and it was perfect. And so a previous version of me wouldn't have even been comfortable sharing that I was going through emotions. And it would have been like, Mm. nope, I'm fine. What do you want to do? And so asking for that space, I mean, it opened up so much. And so it helps us to communicate on a much deeper level. And it also shows us where, like where we're attracted and what we, yeah, like where we're attracted, what brings us together, what we're looking for that the other person possibly fulfills. Yeah. Mm. There's so much to relationships. They're really fun. (laughs) They, they so are. I mean, it's it's fascinating too. I mean, it makes so much sense that when we come together, literally our ener- energy gets placed on top of each other. And yeah. for me, it was such a revelation because it takes it out of the the typical roles that you think a um, man and a woman would have. So for example, being a manifestor generator, I, I want to do all the time, but I typically would have associated that with all men as well. Mm-hmm. But my husband, a projector, he relaxes a lot. And yeah. When I understood that's a projector, I could stop saying, why aren't you doing anything? <laughs> I'm just realizing he has to go away to get his energy back. And he accomplishes a lot just by not doing. And so that mm-hmm. was just life changing for our relationship. Absolutely. And then even with, um, this is interesting for sacral beings, but specifically in a sacral and non-sacral relationship, I'm curious if he finds that he sleeps better if you're not in the room. Interestingly, I probably sleep better if if he's okay. not in the room. Yeah. And I, yeah. I wake up. <laughs> it's really interesting. Like it's actually better for me to wake up with no one in the bed because he actually will wake up sometimes at four. Like he doesn't sleep as long as I do because I sleep typically like from 10 till seven. Yeah. And that's actually the best for me when I wake up and there's no other energy there. Um, but being part. So probably it would be better for us to sleep separately, but we do sleep together because we want to sleep together. Yeah. That is really interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I found that, um, or there's a lot of literature around how when a sacral being is like generators and manifesting generators, when we're sleeping, that battery is recharging. And so if someone is in your energy, they're going to feel you recharging, but they're Mm -hmm. not able to kind of get into that space of like stillness. And Mm -hmm. so it's um, like, it's healthiest for everyone to actually sleep alone. But I've noticed that if I've had like a really, really exhausting night or a really long day where I was just like in a creative project and just going, um, my husband will tend to like fall asleep on the couch or something. And so it's almost like if I'm really exhausted, I need more space. And so then I will sleep really well alone. And of course he's able to recharge alone as well. He is a generator, but yeah, just it's interesting the sleep dynamics as well, especially with like children. Mm. Um, children, it's really interesting. So like projector children tend to sleep better if they have their own room versus generator children may want to co-sleep. And so, or like a projector mother might, or someone with an undefined sacral may not want to co-sleep because that child is like, they're very, they're recharging. And so it might be exhausting for the mother to have a generator child sometimes. And of course Mm -hmm. these are, these are just some stereotypes. They're not as, it's not a set in stone of as a projector, you will always experience this, but those are, there's potential for that. Yeah. And it just helps you not feel guilty or that you're wrong. You know, it, it helps actually define that. Yes, this is something that's just normal for your, your personality type. Yeah. I think it's so freeing. 
It is. Yes. It's Mm -hmm. that external permission slip to trust yourself internally over everything else. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting because I think sometimes we need these external things to give us that permission. But once we have that permission a couple of times, we start trusting ourselves and we no longer need those permission slips. But it's almost like we needed them a little bit in the beginning to start trusting ourselves. Yeah. I think that I think that it really is that our our reality is such a reflection of our internal state. And so if you're in the energy of like needing external validation and you're searching for it, your internal state is saying, I am not valid. But when you are in a state of I'm valid, that feedback is going to be there. And so even if that feedback is the thing that makes you realize that that's how you feel internally, it's still present because you're open to that experience and because you are creating that internally. So I believe that, you know, people come to human design when it's aligned for them. And if it is something that makes you feel empowered, it's because you were already ready to express that trait. You mentioned that, you know, the, the teacher appears when the student is ready, the feedback and the recognition and that approval and that external validation also appears when you're ready to actually hear it and receive it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Before we tell people where they can find you, is there anything that's just really alive for you that you've been working on and studying in the field of human design? Because I know you're such a studier and you're always learning. Is there anything you're just really excited right now that you've found or you're exploring? Yes, I'm exploring the profiles at a deeper level. So your profile is that those numbers that you get, it's so I'm a six two. Um, it's a combination of two different numbers. And I've been exploring them because the traditional explanation is actually only one of six different essentially dimensions of the profile. And so I've been looking at the profile in all of these different dimensions. And so we have like your profile and what you're familiar with, like the hermit and the role model for that six, two, or it's role model. Role model is the six line. Two is the hermit. Um, those are only like, that's only one, one way in which that profile shows up. And so I've been learning about how that profile shows up with like different keynotes or a different label in different settings. So that's individual and like in your personal role, but there's also different roles. And I do not remember all of them because there's 12 (laughs) profiles and six different sets of these keynotes. So it's way too many for me to remember, but I definitely have them written down. Um, but being able to see like there's a collective role. And so what's your role in the collective and how is it going to look when you're bringing your role to other people versus like, how do you feel internally when you're interacting at a collective level or a tribal level? The tribal level is really amazing for intimacy and for relationships. So your profile is going to show up differently. Um, I'm not necessarily a role model and a hermit in my relationship. That's not who I need to be there. I get to be a different flavor of that six too, but it's going to show up differently because there's these, there's this like different perspective of looking at the profile. So I've been down a rabbit hole for months and I've included, um, I like wrote a bunch of that content and that's in the energetic resumes, but yeah, I'll be recording another podcast episode on it in the next month or so. And I am just extremely lit up by it and nerding out over (laughs) all of the things. (laughs) I love hearing that. And I think that's, you know, how we get deeper into our craft by continually exploring Mm -hmm. and what intrigues us. And yeah, just, just fascinating. So Eden, where can people find you and where would be the best place to start for people who are very new to human design as well? Yes. If you're new to human design, Google it. There's so much free information out there. You can find YouTube videos. You can find blog posts. I hang out on Instagram and I have a lot of educational content on Instagram. It is at I am Eden Carpenter. My website is also edencarpenter.com. So everything is super simple and easy to find. Um, In my offers, if you're wanting to start with something specific, the business blueprint is it's between 35 and 37 typically, or if you're a reflector, it's actually going to be closer to 60 pages of personalized information about how your design applies to your business. And so it's focused on like, what kinds of keywords would you want to be using on a resume? What kinds of traits do you have working with teams? How are you going to feel showing up personally versus, um, in actual teams? And so it's, 
the, I'm so proud of it. It's an incredible PDF. It's an incredible personalized offer. So if you're interested, that would be a great place to start. And Google, you can find so much information. There's a lot out there right now. Um, I, I'm a self-studier and I always encourage other people to also use the resources that are available to you. There's lots and lots out there. Fantastic. And tell us what's the book that you're reading right now that you're most excited about? Ooh, I'm currently reading a book called Glow. Um, it's the fourth book in the Plated Prisoner series. I started reading fantasy last year. And so I've read, I have a little reading streak of like 400 days on Kindle. <laughs> But I've been reading like fantasy romance novels and really like stepping away from personal development. And it's mm. been really, really helpful. But mm. the Glow, um, Glow, that's the fourth book in the Plated Prisoner series. It's it's dark. It deals with trauma. It deals with like it's a romance. It's fantasy. It's, yeah, it's a whole bunch of things like check trigger warnings, but I've been really enjoying it. Um, it's yeah, the author has, does a really amazing job of like, there is some on page trauma, but she does such a beautiful job of like crafting relationships that, um, facilitate healing and facilitate Mm -hmm. like raw emotional healing. And I just, the way that she crafts it is absolutely beautiful. So I, I love getting my, getting my claws into something really emotional. (laughs) And it's so important, you know, we, for those yeah. of us that have businesses and really love our craft, we do a lot of reading in that area, but I think it's so important to do something different. Fantasy, yes. for me, it's psychological um, crime thrillers. Like I love yeah. the psychological <laughs> component. So yeah, I'm so with you. And then what do you love to do outside of your work? Like what just makes you feel alive? Yeah. What makes me feel alive right now, my back patio is just giving me life. Um, we, I started a little herb garden. So you can see, I have a plant here. I have a ton of house plants. I'm a plant mom. I'm a dog mom. I love playing with my dogs. They make me feel very alive. I recently got a motorcycle because, um, Manny Jen, my husband got it. It sounded like fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one too and I'm like, I'm going to learn how to ride this. And that's been a fun little journey. But yeah, as a Manny Jen, what I like to do changes a lot. And so I, I bounce between hobbies. I was, you know, did, you know, gymnastics when I was younger. So I love to do yoga. I love to bike. We have like mountain bikes, very active, just being active and letting myself dive into whatever I'm excited about in that moment. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your gifts and your knowledge and letting us get to know you as well. It's just been so great to have you on the podcast. So thank you so much, Eva. Thank you so much for having me. This was a beautiful conversation. To celebrate the launch of the Soul Crafter Life podcast, I did my first ever giveaway. And today is the day to announce the winners. First of all, I want to thank everyone for your support, your enthusiasm for the podcast, your reviews, your shares on Facebook and Instagram, and all your private messages. I was so touched by your love and support. Thank you so much. So let's announce the winners. Number three prize, any two products of your choice from our online gift company, sacredlotuslove.com, valued at $100 US, goes to Robin Thomas in the USA. Number two prize, 30 minutes of one-on-one coaching with me, whether you'd like to do coaching on your business, health, relationships, money, or life design, normally 250, goes to Sigrun Kruger in Germany. And the number one prize, one hour of one-on-one coaching with me, normally 500 US dollars, goes to Emmanuel Diaz in Mexico. I'll be reaching out to each of you so you can choose your Sacred Lotus Love products and or book your coaching call with me. Thank you again, everyone, for your excitement for the Soul Craft Your Life podcast. And I look forward to bringing you interesting, transformational, and magical conversations every week. See you in the next episode.